Time travel possible, particularly when you hear that Babaji has been living for a thousand years in Himalayas and so on. You hear about all these things, so I'm curious what you think about all that. It's become… Somebody said something about Babaji way back. Now everybody has started talking about him, they started making movies about him, everybody started seeing him everywhere. The reason why I always refrain from speaking of anything that is not yet in people's experience is because people have no hold or no control over their imagination, they will become very hallucinatory. Ninety percent of the religion has become hallucinatory because people have no control over their imagination, isn't it? See. Suppose I start talking about angels right now. You see all the white cloths and the blue cloth. <laughs> so, uh, the moment you talk about something that is not in people's experience, you will always see in any group of people, the most stupid will see it first. The intelligent will sit there and wonder what the hell is happening. But the most idiotic people will see the angels and gods and everything instantly. Yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> is this the reality or no? Simply because they have no hold over their imagination, it just flies. Immediately they start seeing, they're not lying, they start seeing because they have no control over their imagination. So, <clears throat> I don't want to speak about Babaji as such because too much has happened in his name. <laughs> but is such a thing possible? There have been many yogis in the past who still are in some ways. They retain the subtlest part of their body intact and just let it be. Whenever they feel it's necessary, they are capable of recreating their old bodies. This is called as nirmanakayas. Such people are known as nirmanakayas who recreate their own body. Gautama, the Buddha, is supposed to be one of the nirmanakayas. There are many others who recreate their own body as it was then, a youthful body as they liked it. Maybe this is hundred years later, thousand years later, whatever number of years, because number of years is not at all the issue. What you call as time is, for this body, one kind of time, for another body, another kind of time, isn't it? See, for your body, ten years means this much, twenty years means that much, thirty years means this much, seventy years means that much, it's like this. Suppose you take a dog, you are one year, maybe fifteen years for him, in his experience, isn't it? If you take an insect, maybe you are one day, is fifty years for him because in two days he'll be gone. So the experience of time and the way life experiences time is very different. In the life of this planet, hundred years maybe just a second, we don't know the calculation, but it is very small, isn't it? So this is not just from human perspective, it is not about comparing everything to our lifetime and coming to it. Even in the perspective of that creature's life, it is so. Maybe not the same way as we calculate, but it's different in its perspective. So once you cross the limitations of the actual physicality, and the logical mind, time is not an issue. You will see, once you get into a certain state of experience within you, you sit there, 
If you sit there for one hour or two hours, it feels like a minute. Time has always been a relative experience. Even in your life, in normal process of life itself, on a particular day you're very happy. Twenty-four hours just passed off like that, isn't it? Another day you're unhappy. Twenty-four hours feels like a year, isn't it? So time is always a relative experience. As your energies get more intense, you will see time just flies faster and faster. If you are in a very intense state, twenty-four hours feels like just a minute, it just goes. So, because when you live intensely within yourself, one year just goes like a whiz, you know, you don't know what's happening. Before you turn around and see, years are just gone because you live intensely. As you become more and more intense in your experience, you will see time goes off like this. So once you have dropped your physical body, the earthy body that you picked up from the planet, now suddenly time is not an issue. What you think as hundred years later is nothing, just a moment later. So maybe just a moment later he came back, but you think he came back five hundred years later. In his experience, he just turned around and came back. But in your experience, it's five hundred years later. So, the more I talk about it, the more nonsensical it'll become. Because there is a point beyond which you cannot speak logically. Today, do you know, modern science is talking about fuzzy logic. Fuzzy logic means no logic but they are unwilling to admit that they are becoming illogical. It's a shame for a scientist to be illogical. So they are discovering new words and they are saying it's fuzzy logic. If it's fuzzy, it's not logic, isn't it? So, if we speak any more on this, we will become fuzzy <laughs> The word yogi means, the word yoga means union or in your experience if everything becomes one, that's called yoga. So one who has experienced this oneness is called a yogi. So once you have arrived at such an experience, you are generally referred to as a yogi. A mystic means Oh, well, this is like MBA, PhD <laughs> Mystic means in his presence he does so many things that nobody understands. <laughs> so many things happen that nobody is able to understand, like the program. You are not able to understand. What felt him? <laughs> That's why I'm a mystic. <laughs> so, a mystic means what, what are considered to be deep mysteries for lots of people is, is normal life for him. So, he's referred to as a mystic. People call him a mystic because they're describing that he is not just a saint. A saint means somebody who has attained to a certain level of pleasantness. He has attained to a certain level of pleasantness where he can only bless people. He has no technology. He has no technology to offer, he can only bless people. There are lots of saints like this who are very pleasant beings. They bless people, they give some offerings to people. Their presence is good but they have no technology. They are not really for your ultimate liberation. They are people who enrich you on the way. There are lots of saints like this. So a mystic means he has technologies to take you into the mysteries of life. So he is a mystic. They said a sage. Sage means somebody who is in a certain state of wisdom. It's something to do with life. 
It's not just an inner attainment. It has got something to do with living life. So, if someone is wise with life around, then he is called a sage. Do I qualify or no? Okay. <laughs>